Blade and Quill. Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel. Last week uh, we created this uh, short animation. Today I am going to show you how to color it and export it as a GIF file. Before the start, uh, let me show you a few changes that I have made. I decided to modify my character a little. As you can see, we have now a very cute female rabbit. I also modified the droplets and the heart shapes. Also before the start, I would like to warn you that this tutorial is going to be long. Finally, please understand that this is a one way of coloring, so make sure to check other YouTube artists and see how they color. You may uh, prefer their way uh, over mine. Grab the contiguous selection tool, also called the magic wand. When you click on it, a new set of actions appear in the tool options docker. By default, the tool is set to replace. Click on the button Add instead. This will allow you to make multiple selections. Check the box Anti-Aliasing. In the drop-down menu, choose All Layers. Leave the fuzziness alone. In the Grow Shrink selection window, increase the value to 1 pixel. And we are done. We have calibrated our wand. We can start working. Create a new layer above the background. Click F2 and rename it Colors. In the timeline, Click on the very first square frame of our newly created layer. Now right click and choose a Create Blank Frame. Grab the magic wand. Zoom in as needed. And with a tool, select all the body parts that you want to paint. In the color wheel, select a new shade or tint and fill your multiple selections with it using the Shift plus Backspace shortcut. To undo your selections, hit Ctrl Shift plus A. Repeat the process. Choose a new color. Select your areas. and fill them with uh, that new color. Undo your selections and repeat again. Before to go any further, let's fill our background with a color that will uh, help us see better. Any color will do. Unlock the background layer first. Click on it to make it active. In the color wheel, grab a new shade. Using our favorite shortcut, fill the layer with a new color. Relock the layer, this way you won't paint on it by accident. Alright, let's finish to color our character. The magic wand is still active with it. We are going to select the eyes this time. Let's choose a white color. Oh, and by the way, if you are still on the background layer, don't forget to get back to the colors layer. Now let's fill our new selections. Time to use a brush, uh, let's grab it. In the brush smoothing window, we are going to choose a none. Make sure that the pen pressure is turned off. 
change the size as needed and uh, we are going to start filling the small areas uh, with uh, our white color. Hit the control key on your keyboard to pick up a color. In the color wheel, uh, darken the color you just picked and uh, with that new uh, shade we are going to paint uh, the eyelids. We are almost done. Let's grab a new color and uh, paint the pages of a book. And we are done. We have painted our first frame. Back to the timeline, we are going to click on the next square frame. Right click and this time select Create Duplicate Frame. We are going to fill all the spaces that miss color or that need corrections. Just remember to use the control key on your keyboard to pick up the colors that you need and then work. Time to work on the next frame. Click on it first, then right click, select Create Duplicate Frame. On this frame, we only need to paint the droplets, so grab the magic wand and fill them with the color of your choice. Time to work on the next frame. Click on it first as usual, then right click to select Create Duplicate Frame. As you can see here, the droplets have moved, but the paint did not follow. So we are going to need to correct that. Grab the paint brush, turn on the eraser. Increase the size as needed and remove all the blue paint. Now turn off the eraser and using the magic wand select all the droplets as you did before and fill them with a blue color. Repeat the same process for all the remaining frames. Just a quick reminder, you can always go back to a previous frame to pick a color that you need. Alright, we have reached the last frame. 
As you can see here, we don't need to do anything, so we are going to leave it alone. Time to check if we forgot anything. Let's go back to the very beginning and check every frame one by one. Alright, as you can see here, I forgot to paint the tooth. The brush is still active. I'm going to click X on my keyboard to switch between the foreground and the background color. Now I can paint the tooth. The only thing left to do for me now is to go to each of the next frames and paint the tooth. If you turn off the colors layer, you will obviously only see the line art. We are going to paint the line art around the droplets and the heart shapes. But before we go any further, let me uh, turn back on the colors layer. Uh, I need to find the frame that contains uh, both shapes. Here it is. I am going to create a new layer above the animation layer and using the control key I am going to pick the colors of the droplets and the hearts and paint color swatches on the side. <laughs> this will become somehow my color palette. Let's go back to the colors layer and turn it off. Click on the animation layer to make it active to lock the alphas. Since the color red is already active, the only thing left to do for me is to color all the heart shapes. I'm going to do that on all the frames where the hearts are found. Time to pick the color uh, of the droplets. And uh, we are done. We can now uh, turn back on the colors layer. I'm going to remove uh, the layer with the uh, color swatches. And uh, time to play the animation uh, to see how it looks. Now that we are done, we can unlock the background and test new colors. Don't forget to hit Ctrl plus U on your keyboard to tweak and calibrate your new background colors. Create a new layer above the background and rename it anything you want. I am going to rename it Environment. Grab a brush of your choice and start drawing. Maybe some clouds. Maybe a flower. To color your new environment, create a new layer between the background and the environment. And you are done! In the Krita's reference manual, scroll down until you find a render animation. Click on it to open the page. In the render animation page, scroll down until you find the instructions to download the free open source software called FFMPEG, which is going to help us process our short video. Click on this blue link called the download page. 
it will take us to this build page. We need to find the latest release and we also need to make sure that we click on the zip file. Click on the link called Release Essentials Zip. It will download right away. Go to your download file in the Windows Explorer on your computer. Right click on the zip file and select Extract All. In the new window, click on Browse to find a new location for the program that you have just downloaded and when done, click on the button Extract. When the file is fully extracted, double click on it to open it. Double click on the bin. Here is the exe file that we will need in a few seconds. Back in Krita, go to File and choose a Render Animation. Make sure that you are in the Video section of the Render Animations window. Click on this file folder to find the coding program we just downloaded. Find your file. Open the bin and select the exe file. And here it is. Click here to choose the format of your video. We are going to choose a GIF format. Finally, click here to find a location to save your new video. Click OK when done. Depending on your computer, the rendering may take a minute or may take a few more time. And we are done for today. I will see you in the next tutorial and share a few more animation tricks. So see you next time. Au revoir et à bientôt.